Hello and welcome back to another HW Aquascaping video. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be doing another aquascaping build tutorial where we're going to be using this ADA 30C which I acquired from Scape Nature so shout out to you guys. It's a great tank, um, really great value for money and it's about 25 litres I think. Um, so uh, yeah it should make a nice little uh, scape for what I've got planned. The lighting that we're going to be using on this uh, scape is the uh, ONF Flat Nano Plus. Filtration is the Seachem Tidal 35. Uh, the heater is an Awaze heat up uh, 50 watts and on the back we've got the light ground which um, I thought you know we've got an ADA tank uh, let's jazz it up you can get ADA products as like a substitute but the light ground is a really good sort of uh, affordable substitute and to be honest I can't really tell the difference from the ADA ones so uh, yeah I think the scape's really popping and uh, it's for my new edition um, that I'm Really excited to introduce to you in this video. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen a few sneak peeks of this, but uh, basically this scape is going to be a better scape. So uh, let's get to, to the scaping and I'll uh, introduce you to who I've got for this uh, aquarium. So first things first, I'm trying a bit of a different style of uh, editing this video. Basically when I do aquascaping build tutorials, I split them into two parts, one being the hardscape, one being the planting. This one's going to be like a full walkthrough tutorial, so I'd like to know in the comments down below if you prefer this style of um, video or if you prefer them split up, if you find it easier to follow. Um, your feedback's really important to me, so uh, yeah, do let me know on that one. But, uh, but yeah, let's go into the hardscape. So the rock we're using here is a type of rock called elephant skin rock. It's a really nice rock, and as you can see by the textures, the lines, um, the grooves in there, do make the rock look a bit like elephant skin. Um, it's, uh, it's a really nice rock, it's great for planting epiphyte plants onto because they've got like you know lots of nooks and crannies to root into um, but also if you just want to leave them and just let algae grow on them um, the like age texture as such uh, it just makes it look even better so uh, yeah I highly recommend using this in some aquascapes now the second bit in here is uh, this nice little piece of wood that uh, as you can see I've already got plants on um, and basically this piece of wood came out of the uh, Denali Nano Tank, um, uh, the Nano 30 cube uh, with the uh, shrimp in it. So I've stripped that down and uh, the tank, the ADA tank that you see here is actually in the same place where that used to be. I've switched positions of my tanks recently. Um, and uh, yeah, basically this piece of wood was facing the opposite direction. So it used to spear out the top of the water, but I could never actually see the Anubis growing on it. And I didn't realise how well it actually rooted on, and uh, I thought, yeah, it looks amazing, this, like, I want to reincorporate it into another scape. So, my idea with the scape here is to basically bank a load of aqua soil up in the back left corner, and have it sort of like helter-skelter around the biggest rock, um, to the back right. So, it'll be really low down in the back right, and it'll sort of bank up into the back left, um, and go quite high up the tank, about halfway. Um, and then we'll basically plant plants all the way down it and then the foreground will be just decorative sand with a bit of detail rock as it fades into the aqua soil so that sort of creates a bit of a retaining wall as such um, but yeah and then the fish will be able to swim underneath the uh, wood and I'm hoping that it'll look really effective
So there we go, we've got the aqua soil in. Now it's time for the decorative sands. Now, the decorative stand that I've gone for is the ADA La Plata sands that I purchased from Horizon Aquatics. Um, and the one thing I will note is the quality compared to like most sands is really, really high. Like, you know, there's no comparison to ADA products to anything else. And I thought, I've got an ADA tank, I think I should probably definitely choose ADA. But uh, yeah, as I said, I got this from Horizon Aquatics. They sent it really quickly to me. Uh, I also got the plants from there and they were all packaged beautifully. So shout out to you guys, top work as always. But uh, yeah, we'll get the uh, sand in and we'll move on to the next step. <laughs> So we're moving on now to adding a little bit of detail stone. It's not a necessary step that you need to take to build any aquarium. I just quite happen to like doing this. I think that, you know, it breaks that sort of unnatural, um, artificial looking line that you sort of see between decorative sand and then aqua soil. I think this is a little bit more natural in that, like, so, you know, you've got the smaller rocks that break into the big sort of rocks, such as that we're using for the hardscape. And then it just blends a lot better, I think. But as I say, it's personal preference. You do not have to do this if you don't want to. But if you do, the particular stone that I'm using here is just Denele Rio Zingu gravel. Um, you can sort of get it in a nice little uh, box that's got a bag in it. And uh, yeah, I really like it because you sort of get lots of different textures of rock in there. So it, it looks a lot more natural to me. You've got big ones, small ones. And uh, yeah, I just think it looks really natural and blends in really nicely so if you want to use that that is what the product you need to uh, get is hardscape complete and we're moving on to the planting. So the plants that I'm using right now is a uh, Cryptocryne Wentii Green. It's a nice little crypt, don't get too big, it's sort of a medium sized one. Um, and what I've used here is a Tropico 1-2 grow cup and this is actually just one cup's worth of plants. So value for money I think is top notch. I mean I'm expecting a little bit of crypt melt but what I'm hoping for in the long run is for the crypts to basically bush out and create a nearly really nice transition from the stem plants I'm going to put at the back into the mid-ground and then into the foreground plants that I'm going to plant in a second. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's a really nice crypt, as I say, you know, really nice and green, and I'm hoping it's going to become a really nice dense bush. Now, what I'm doing here now is going to be planting a carpet plant. So the plant I'm using is Micranthamoides Monte Carlo. Um, it's a new plant to me. Um, as you know, I'm not really good at growing carpeting plants. Uh, it's not my forte at all. You know, uh, stem plants is great. 
and uh, epiphytes, uh, but uh, I've never really been good at carpeting plants, you know. For me, it's a little bit too much maintenance, but with this scape, I really wanted to challenge myself, and uh, I thought, yeah, I'm going to go for a carpeting plant. I've got a friend who's had great success with uh, low energy setups with Monte Carlo, so I thought, why not? I'll give it a go. And then I had one cup left over. I used three cups for the actual carpet and then this one. Um, but uh, I saw Green Aqua do this and uh, they basically use it a bit like an epiphyte plant. It's just to wedge it in gaps and let it just trail down. So what I'm hoping for is that uh, this Monte Carlo here cascades down and sort of joins on the carpet. And I'm hoping that'll look really great. But if not, it's an experiment. I'll just take it out if not. So the second uh, issue that I saw, as you can see, is there's a little bit of aqua soil that's sort of spilling over. Now, usually I'd uh, put a bit of filter floss in there just to sort of stop that, but I've only got two rocks in the foreground, and I don't really think it's possible to do that. So what I'm going to do is another trick that I've done before, which is to just put some epiphyte plants in that gap, and as they sort of root in, they'll sort of create a natural barrier as such to stop this aqua soil from spreading onto the decorative sand. Um, so the plant that I'm using here is uh, Bucephalandra Thea Green. It's uh, a new Bucephalandra to me again. I'm using a lot of new plants in this one. Um, it's It's got a different texture um, to like normal Bucephalandras. Uh, they're just sort of like a more rounded leaf on this one rather than the sort of like crinkly textured leaf, um, which I thought was quite nice. And then the second plant, uh, which is another recycled, recycled plant, uh, should I say, um, is some Bucephalandra uh, Kedagang. Now, this particular Kedagang came from the shrimp tank as well. Um, and that shrimp tank is low energy, and it's been running off of a fluval plant light, which it's not been running on its full capacity lighting either. So look at the colours on this. I was absolutely amazed when I pulled this out at the deep reds and purples that are coming out of this compared to the Kedagang that I have in the Asian Peninsula Aquarium which is like just a really dark purpley black colour um, so when I saw it I thought you know what I've got to put this in this is like the most amazing plant I've seen you know the diversity in colours that are in that plant um, I don't know if it picks up as well as it does in real life on the camera but um, it's it's definitely amazing so it's it's got to go in and moving on so when I was uh, looking at uh, this piece of wood, I noticed in between the gaps in the Anubis Nana Bonsai, the, there was a few big gaps. So what I've done here is I've just got some um, uh, Bucephalandra uh, wavy green. Um, it's, uh, you know, not quite Anubis, but it's a, it is an epiphyte plant and it's bright green as well. So I thought that would make a nice little uh, alternative to put in there, add a bit of extra texture and just fill out those gaps. And then we're moving on to the back corner now. So the plant that I've chosen to put in this one is another new one. Um, it is Retala rotundifolia, but it's an orange juice variety, which I've seen growing on the internet and in a few YouTube videos. I thought it looks amazing. And I thought we would just add that dash of colour that the scape's sort of missing because it is very green heavy other than the Kedagang. So, uh, yeah, I thought that back left, if that's like nice and orange, fades into the green and then you've got that sort of spark of ready purple from uh, the Kedagang. Uh, but yeah, we're going to get that filled up and I will introduce you to the new inhabitant.
finished the scape off with a few floating plants, a mixture of Salnavia natans and red root floaters. And it's time to introduce you to uh, my new better. Uh, this is uh, Spyro. He's a half moon better. Um, and yeah, I'm, re I'm really glad to finally have a better back in the uh, gallery as such. Um, it's been a long time since I've had one, and I don't think I could have got a better one, really. Um, it's uh, He's just so confident. Um, like, even when I first got him, he's out and about, he's flaring his fins up. And he's actually feeding out my hand, which I think is just absolutely amazing. I'd say I've only had him about a week, but uh, but yeah, he's he's just absolutely an amazing character. And uh, you know, I've had a few shy betters in the past, but uh, this guy, this guy is just spot on. You know, he's absolute perfection. And you know, I've I've really fallen in love with him uh, from day one. Really, he's just he's just an amazing fish. But, uh, but yeah, that's all from me today, guys. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this style of video. And let me know in the comments down below. Um, one, what do you think of Spyro? Um, do you think I've made the right choice going for a better escape? And two, do you prefer the style, uh, style of video compared to my usual style of editing uh, an aquascaping build tutorial? Um, your feedback's really important to me. And it'll help the channel going forwards if I know what you guys prefer to hear. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I'll, uh, leave you with these, uh, last few images of Spyro and take care wherever you are and whatever you're doing. I'll catch you in the next video, guys. See you later.